Beyond Trust Remote Support lets you access and support any device or system anywhere in the world. As part of the Beyond Trust Privileged Access Management Platform, Remote Support empowers IT and service desk organizations to support Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, network devices, and peripherals with one secure solution, all without the need for VPN and traditional all or nothing remote access tools. Remote support gives your organization centralized control over every remote access session performed by the service desk. That includes both incoming tickets initiated by users and remote connections to servers and unattended systems launched by the service desk. Finally, with remote support, you gain complete visibility into session activity, both in real time and after the fact, through management dashboards, session logs, and annotated screen recordings. Remote support is an appliance-based solution that can be deployed in several different formats. We do offer a physical rack-mountable appliance. More commonly, though, are our virtual and cloud deployments. Customers can deploy our virtual appliance using VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V and Azure, or Amazon AWS. In addition, we offer a SaaS version of the appliance through the Beyond Trust Cloud. This enables subscription-based pricing and lets Beyond Trust maintain the infrastructure for you. Feature set and security capabilities are available to your organization no matter which deployment method you choose. Now let's take a look at how remote support works. To begin, the technicians on your service desk, including external and guest vendor technicians, log into the product. As indicated by the green arrows, all traffic is 443 outbound to the appliance. There's a reason for this. Firewalls are designed to block incoming traffic. That's why traditional remote access tools like RDP, VNC, and Dameware require firewall configuration changes to work over the internet. But with Beyond Trust, the technicians, end users, and endpoints connect to the appliance through outbound connections, so no port forwarding or firewall changes are necessary. When a technician logs into the product, you can have them authenticate using a local account and our built-in two-factor authentication. You can also utilize various combinations of Active Directory, LDAP, SAML, or RADIUS connections. Once logged in, the technician will inherit group policy, which is also managed within the appliance. This lets you determine what customer portals and systems each user has access to, along with the features available to them when they connect. When end users and customers request support, they also connect to the appliance via outbound connections. Because of this, your service desk can connect to and support users wherever they are, even if they're on a hotel Wi-Fi or their VPN is down. Many service desks handle supportive systems as well as users, so Beyond Trust includes a number of connection methods for unattended systems as well. One common method of remote access is the use of jump clients. A jump client is an agent you deploy on a remote computer. It runs as a service and works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and headless Linux operating systems too. Jump clients are especially effective when the network is unknown. Whenever a support technician initiates a connection request, that opens up an encrypted session between the jump client and the appliance. Then the user who's interacting with the system is never connecting directly to the computer itself. Instead, every interaction is happening on the appliance. In addition to jump clients, remote support includes an agentless way of connecting too. A jump point acts as a conduit for remote access to systems on a known network. With this method, a single node is used to access multiple systems on the network, eliminating the need to pre-install software on every computer you may need to access. Like the jump client, the jump point connects outbound to the appliance. As the yellow arrows here indicate, the jump point can utilize legacy protocols like RDP, VNC, or SSH and Telnet. As with the jump client method of connecting, jump points also allow the support technician to interact with each system on the appliance. So even though reps may connect using a legacy protocol like RDP, they're never actually connecting directly to the remote computers themselves. Because the appliance acts as a secure central hub for every remote connection, 
Each session can be fully audited and screen recorded, and these logs and recordings are stored on the appliance in a tamper-proof manner. Finally, remote support eliminates the need for your service desk to remember or share credentials for the systems they need to access. Passwords can be stored on the on-appliance vault, or you can integrate remote support with BeyondTrust Password Safe or another password management solution. This password component enables our credential injection capabilities. Instead of requiring service desk technicians to know usernames and passwords for each endpoint, we can store those credentials securely. And then, using API functionality, we can retrieve those credentials and inject them directly into a session. This means you don't need to expose credentials to anyone on the service desk, giving you more control and flexibility around those accounts. It's likely you've already invested in ITSM, ticketing, and other systems to improve the performance of your service desk. That's why remote support integrates with many of the leading service desk systems. Before we jump into the product itself, let's take a look at how remote support works in concert with your existing systems and processes to impact nearly every service desk metric you care about. When end users and customers need support, they have a number of ways to request it. You can use a ticketing system, such as ServiceNow. You can create custom support portals where end users ask for help. They can also enter queue from our mobile apps or from a support button you deploy to their desktops. During these ad hoc support sessions, BeyondTrust offers a myriad of options for improving service desk metrics, reassuring customers, and enforcing security and compliance. First, as tickets come into your service desk, BeyondTrust enables skills-based routing and load balancing. This helps reduce wait times for customers and keeps individual technicians from being overwhelmed by incoming incidents. Administrators then have a range of access levels to enable support while enforcing least privilege. Incidents can begin with web-based chat. Then the customer can share specific applications with the technician, let the rep view their system or certain applications, or allow full control of their system or applications. Every increasing level of access is permission-based, and the customer always retains overriding control of their system. If first-tier technicians are unable to resolve a ticket on their own, you can enable them to collaborate with higher-tiered reps, or even experts who aren't part of the service desk, such as developers and vendor technicians. This range of interaction can have a huge impact on a number of key service desk metrics. Not only does it drastically increase first call resolution, it also significantly reduces support costs as your more expensive second and third tier reps are only engaged on an as needed basis. You can even customize what occurs when a support session ends. The BeyondTrust Remote Support customer client can completely uninstall from the remote computer. You can also allow technicians to leave behind a support button so that the customer could request support again from the same technician or team should the problem reoccur. Or, if the technician needs to access the system later to continue troubleshooting, you can allow sessions to be pinned with a jump client. And you can define permissions for how those pinned sessions are initiated in the future. Once the session is over, you can make the chat transcript and video recording of the session available to the end user for download. You can also ask the customer to complete a post-session survey on the support interaction. Incidentally, Beyond Trust customers report that these post-session surveys have a completion rate 50 to 60% higher than other customer satisfaction surveys. You can require technicians to complete post-session surveys as well. Finally, remote support enables closed loop reporting. All of the data from the support session, including the chat transcript, the session logs, video recordings, and post-session surveys are passed back into your ITSM or CRM system and associated with the ticket that was created when the session began. Now that we've covered how remote support works, let's walk through some of the ways to initiate a remote connection. In this first scenario, the service desk technician is on the phone with an employee. Because her computer is a managed device the rep has access to, he can select her machine from his list of desktops, or he can enter her username to find her computer. To begin the session, he just double-clicks the workstation. 
you can configure how remote support sessions start, whether they jump into screen sharing and full remote control right off the bat, or whether the end user approves of actions before they're taken. In this case, we've set up a prompt that the customer must accept prior to screen sharing. This enables us to do technician-initiated support while still leaving the end user in control. Once she clicks Allow, screen sharing begins and the rep can control her computer. Technicians can also begin remote support sessions from any ITSM, ticketing, or CRM system you've integrated with Beyond Trust Remote Support. In this example, the rep can begin the support session from ServiceNow. He simply enters the information from the ticket, selects the workstation, and clicks the Jump To Configuration Item button in the ServiceNow incident record. When you use this method to start a session, you'll notice that details from the session will be passed back into the incident or record. So here, the session is over, and you can see that there was a 4 minute, 25 second support session. And down below that, you can also view the logs. Details about the session include system information, links to the recordings, and events that happened in the session. So those are some examples of technician-initiated sessions. Support sessions can also be initiated by the customer. To do this, your customer can go to the URL of your support portal. This URL and portal are unique to your company. You can create custom portals for each customer, group, or product you support. And each portal includes multiple customizable elements. The design of the public site, any agreements and messages, branding of the customer client, exit surveys, and any customer downloads you make available. Incidentally, you can improve security for your organization too by training employees only to use the URL of your portal to request support. Your portal can include a number of ways to start a session. In this example, we have two. First, the customer could enter a session key. You might use this method if the support request began on the phone. The other method here is issue submission. This is Beyond Trust's chat-based approach to support. When using issue submission, incoming chats queue up for the service desk, much like the traditional phone system distributes and queues incoming calls. The user can choose their issue category, enter their name and details about their issue, and click Submit. This will start a web-based chat with the service desk. The service desk technician then receives the session assignment alert and can accept or reject the session. Again, you can configure the routing and assigning of sessions based on a number of factors. You can simply assign to the least busy or next available rep, or you can match skills and issues to specific technicians and teams. The tech just clicks accept to begin chatting with the customer about their issue. During a chat, we can use canned messages that already exist within the application, free form type messages, or send URLs that direct them to knowledge base articles or other resources. And here's what it looks like on the end user's system. They can give more details about their problem through the chat box. Chat is an extremely powerful tool for improving service desk metrics. It's pretty tough to offer phone or on-site support to more than one customer at a time. But with chat, one technician can help multiple end users simultaneously without reducing service quality. Still, the real power with Beyond Trust is the ability to elevate seamlessly from chat support to full remote control support without opening another tool. To do that, the technician just clicks the full customer client button. This will prompt the end user to accept the elevation to a full customer client. Once accepted, they'll download and run a small temporary executable. The customer client then initiates an outbound connection to the appliance. Our prior chat conversation is transitioned to the new client, and the technician can now request screen sharing. Once accepted, the technician can view and control the end user's screen and begin troubleshooting their issue. If you want technicians to guide users through correcting issues themselves, we've included a number of annotation tools for that. One such tool is the virtual pointer, where as we move, we will show a red arrow in their screen and walk the end user through correcting the problem. We can also draw on the screen with a pen freeform, or we can use different shapes that you see below. Most of the time, your service desk supports users who do not have admin rights on their machines. So remote support makes it easy to elevate the customer client whenever administrative rights are needed. 
When you elevate privileges, the technician can view and interact with UAC prompts or log off the end user without losing remote control of the computer. To elevate, you can prompt the customer if they happen to know the administrative password. Additionally, you can pull credentials from the password vault built into remote support, elevate using a virtual smart card, or type in a specific user. In this case, we'll prompt the customer. The end user will receive a single UAC prompt for which they need to answer yes, and from that point forward, the technician will have full control over the system. Now that we're in an elevated mode, let's explore some of the other tools available within a support session. And keep in mind that access to each of these is configurable based on permissions we've set both for the technician and the computer. We can restrict the customer's ability to control the mouse and keyboard or see their screen. We can reboot and automatically reconnect to the remote computer. Options here include reboot, reboot into safe mode or shutdown. We can even request automatic logon credentials from the customer before rebooting. Control-Alt-Delete will send those keystrokes to the system. And then special actions. Special actions include a predetermined list of common tasks performed during a support session, such as task manager or event viewer. You can also create custom actions for workflows specific to your environment or things you commonly do on the service desk. You can also access CAN scripts. CAN scripts are powerful tools for performing tasks on the workstation. It could include something like clearing temporary internet files, flushing the DNS cache, or running a tool such as SysInternals Process Monitor, where the tool will be copied to the remote workstation and executed. Custom actions in CAN scripts, as well as CAN chat messages, let you standardize support workflows for your service desk making troubleshooting faster and more consistent. Speaking of troubleshooting faster, your service desk is always under pressure to improve efficiency, but that drive for performance should never compromise security. At Beyond Trust, we've engineered that balance between security and productivity into the product. One way you can see that is with our credential injection feature. You can save local administrative credentials within the On Appliance Vault, and then give service desk technicians the ability to use them without knowing them or using them outside the tool. To demonstrate this, we'll launch the installer for iTunes. You can see on the install button that we need to pass a UAC prompt before proceeding. Once the UAC prompt appears, you'll notice in the ribbon bar here that the credential injection icon has become active. Since we've given this technician permission to use the local admin credentials, they can inject them into this prompt and continue installing. Credential injection can be used to log on to the workstation, answer UAC prompts, run particular applications, or log onto the PC with that credential. Now, here on the right side of the ribbon are tools that affect the display and clipboard. The first will allow you to grab a screenshot, the next to manage the clipboard content, moving back and forth between the host, technician, and the customer, Multiple monitor supports included, so if you're connected to a system with more than one display, you can choose between them. You can scale the session, and you can determine the color depth. Color depth can have a big impact on latency and performance of the session, so decreasing it when troubleshooting over a lower bandwidth connection can be really helpful. Finally, we can choose an immersed full screen view and back again. In addition to screen sharing, we've got a number of other utilities we can make available to service desk technicians. The first is file transfer. Here you can move files or entire directories back and forth between the two systems. You can use group and session policies to determine direction of transfer and even limit what directories can be accessed. Next is the command shell tab. Here you can run commands from a virtual CMD prompt or a PowerShell. You've also got access to your CAN scripts on the Command Shell tab. When you're working on the Command Shell tab, the commands and scripts you run do not affect the GUI, so the end user can continue working. There's also a System Info tab, where we can quickly see lots of information about the system, including the OS version, computer name, and hardware information. You can also drill down to devices, processes, events, programs, and services. 
We can even stop, start, and restart services, all without working through the GUI or disturbing the end user. And finally, you can give technicians access to registry for behind the scenes viewing and editing of keys. Now, if you'll recall, this support session began with a web-based chat, and we've shown how without disconnecting from the customer or opening another tool, we've moved into viewing the remote computer and then elevated all the way to full remote control with granularly controlled admin privileges. But we're still in first tier. With remote support, technicians can collaborate by sharing or transferring sessions between other members of the service desk or even external experts who aren't part of your organization. And this can be done without disconnecting from the end user at all. So let's demonstrate that. When the original technician needs to invite another rep into the session, they can select other teams or even choose an individual by name. Here, the invited rep joins the session using the web representative console. Both technicians are now looking at the same screen and can work together to resolve the issue. This collaboration can even double as training time for lower tier technicians, as they can watch over the shoulder, as it were, and see how the invited rep resolves the problem. Also, at no time has it been necessary to disconnect from the remote customer. Even if the session transfers completely, the end user's experience will be seamless. The result is that first call resolution rates and customer satisfaction tend to improve whenever a service desk implements Beyond Trust remote support. Support rep productivity improves as well. What we've just shown was one session troubleshooting a Windows computer, but that same rep can run multiple connections with multiple operating systems at the same time. In addition to Windows, Beyond Trust supports Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and several other connection methods. You can even support hardware and peripheral devices through Remote Support's camera sharing feature for mobile devices. You can use screen annotations to walk the customer through troubleshooting steps. And when you begin annotating, we freeze the frame so the customer can move the device and still see your instructions. Finally, Beyond Trust helps you establish a centralized audit trail for remote connections. All sessions can be recorded and audited. So let's take a look at what those reports look like. There are four main reports available, session reports, summary reports, and exit survey reports for customers and representatives. We'll run a simple session report. Once you do that, you can see all the sessions that have been done on this appliance. To see the complete session log, just click Details. And here we also have a link to view the chat transcript, as well as video recordings of the whole session, or just the command shell activity from the session. These recordings are compressed, so they have a pretty small footprint in terms of storage space, especially if you want to retain the data for longer periods. As you've seen, remote support lets you access and support virtually any device or system without hindering the productivity of your users. It integrates seamlessly with ITSM, CRM, and password management solutions, enabling you to leverage investments you've already made into improving your service desk. Users can even connect from mobile devices or through a browser, and every session is logged and recorded, enabling you to satisfy compliance requirements.